We are good. Cool. Awesome. Nice. Okay. Welcome, guys. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us this evening. Uh, joined tonight by Kason Lamb and Randy Rudicelli to review some portfolios. So um, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me. This is always a big request item in, in our community. Just how's my art looking? What do I need to change? How do I make this as competitive as possible to launch a career. So, uh, Kaysen, you're, you're our, our special guest of the evening. Uh, for those of you who may not know, Kaysen is, is a big deal. He has a ridiculous list of credits. Uh, his portfolio is phenomenal. If you haven't checked it out before joining, uh, and, and Randy, uh, brags on his, his critique. Uh, so <laughs> not to just put all the pressure on you, Kaysen, but, uh, we're really <laughs> pleased to have you so thanks for doing this oh thank you so much for the invitations um yeah thank you for the kind word <laughs> but yeah hopefully i can help um just giving a little bit more feedback on you know to the community to uh, all the students so yeah perfect um we had 19 portfolios submitted i would love to try and get through every one of them try and get some feedback for everybody who submitted so i want to get right to that but first i have some kind of general portfolio questions that i'm curious about uh, hmm. First of all, like presentation wise, um, kind of just, I guess, standard art station versus do you agree in like going all Wix, making a big produced looking portfolio or just kind of whatever? Um, to me, um, it's actually better to do both, you know, like you always have a art station just to back you up it's easy to pull it up to show people you know like everybody use art station easy to access but the thing is when you let's say you're going to lightbox right since lightbox just happened um you kind of don't want to just depend on art station and show people hey here's my project because uh when it comes to art station you don't have a control of what people are going to click right so it's kind of like everywhere um instead you should start formatting a pdf um, in terms of type of portfolio or project portfolio, because now when in a PDF format, first of all, people don't need internet to access it. So what if you go to Lightbox and the internet out? You're like, oh, snap, I'm done, right? Um, but you have a PDF on you, you can always show it page by page, easy to scroll. Um, I did heard some director that worked with before a client, they prefer PDF or a little bit better as well because they can send it to each other internally on you know Slack or something, where it's just like a link that you just need to click all right and once you click into your um to your art stage you kind of don't know where to go kind of thing um so i always prefer pdf a little bit um so also you always want to think about how you want to show your portfolio what what's the first thing they should be looking at from big to small from the world from the project right and then go into like maybe keyframe and then character and then props and all that so you don't control uh the flow you don't want them to just go on their own, right? Then now it's like, oh, wait, how come uh, this project, you're not showing this? Oh, by the way, you didn't click that. You, you don't want to minimize all this kind of kind of weird conversations, you know? So I will say do both, yeah. That's awesome. I love the PDF idea. I've, I've never tried that, but that's, mm -hmm. that's great. Um, okay, my other like grand portfolio debate question is specialize or generalize? Uh, mm. I can, you know, obviously pros and cons for both, but like, yeah, which one, let's say I am desperate to launch a concept art career one year from today, which way would you steer mm -hmm. somebody? Um, so for me, it's, it depends on your goal. Uh, do you want to work in a big AAA studio versus a smaller company like outsourcing, you know, like, like us? My company is like a really small team. So when it comes to like smaller team, you're going to be working a lot more different things just because it is a small outsourcing studio. Um, for my for my studio, we will work on like something sci-fi and into a moment you work on something kind of theme park. And then you next day you work on something like fantasy, you know, illustrations. Um, so you want to show like different work, right? Oh, I can do painting. I can do a little bit line drawing. I want to, I can do a little bit design, right? But that is only good for like smaller studio because when you go to a big studio, it's actually better if you be a little bit more precise on what you want to show. Like, I want to be the Mac guy. So they know how to slot you in, right? So now it really depends on, you know, like on you. Like, what do you, where do you want to go? Um, that's that's something that I always tell students to kind of like think about. You don't need to have like a, like, I only want to work for Riot kind of mentality, but it's always good to have it in, in your back of your mind that like you want to, oh, go with something like a, like a Blizzard. 
type of the artwork that you want to show, what type of uh, angle depends on the game, right? You want to target it to that one studio. Um, but it, And also there's another good thing is kind of like uh, previously, why not both, you know? Because you're going to be doing daily line drawing, daily paintings, right? All that could be kind of like a portfolio that um, show everything, right? But when you go to a like an event like Lightbox, you, you already know that, oh, that studio, I want to work for them. Um, try to categorize them. Oh, it's a stylized Blizzard type of studio. Let me make a portfolio only for them, right? And this portfolio is not going to only attract Blizzard. It's going to attract every project that want to do Blizzard style. So you're actually targeting a lot more studio than just one studio. Um, so you want to show that portfolio to them. And then at the end, you can even show the other one. Oh, by the way, I also do a bunch of other, other stuff. If you want to check it out right here. Um, so now you kind of cover both bases, you know? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with that too. And, and I, that's something also I, I learned from Kazen. But I've seen the portfolios where you have a variety that's so wide that they're not sure what your skill set is. And they're like, okay. Mm -hmm see you can do this you can do this but it's so wide and then when you just narrow it down a little bit more and you have a specific you know trade where they're like i know this guy can do this but look what else he can do so there's a there's a really gentle way to kind of approach this yeah and i think it's hilarious you brought up the pdf because i was at lightbox last year and there was a guy in line for naughty dog and he was trying desperately to get his thing to come up online and <laughs> there's like 20 people behind him like come on dude and the next girl has a pdf ready to go so um it is. It's a good tip. Yeah. And the, you can actually do it like, let's say you want to do like one Pacific like, like style or even a um, like theme, right? Like a sci-fi game, like a sci-fi portfolio. You can actually tackle it down with like, oh, painting keyframes and line drawing keyframe, shoebox design. So even within one style, with one project, you show your ability from drawing to design to painting to keyframe. So you don't really need to like have one that like have everything in it, just even that one. But really showcase all the skills that you can provide um, is also really good. And if you want to do an extra mile, you can even print out your PDF. Just make a little little book, you know? Like when you go to uh, events, um, it's really rare for people to keep, give books anymore, you know? So if, if there is like big studio that you really, want, want to, uh, you really want to work for, you can print out maybe like 15 copies, right? Something that can a little bit nicer. It's going to cost a little bit, but not like you, you don't want to print out like 100 books, you know? Just give them the book at the end. Like, hey, here's my portfolio. Hey, by the way, this is for you. There's a QR code on it, you know. I uh, have a little little name card, business card, put it under the, uh, it's like a little nice gift for them to take it away, you know. Um, so that's always nice little gesture you can do. Put a hundred bucks in there too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. That's always uh that's always the hardest question for me to answer. It sounds like mm. your your answer is sort of do both, <laughs> which is <laughs> Just do everything, uh, <laughs> but that that makes sense. I think there's a a balance to walk there. Uh, great advice. Um, cool guys, let's uh let's dig into some portfolios. Um, actually, I think we have one PDF in the mix, so uh, extra credit for for that artist right out of the gate. Um, nice, cool. So let me try and make this as big as I can. Okay, new sides work. Um, I guess let's start clicking through. Always, always the first thing is navigation. Where where are you drawn to first? What mm -hmm. what do you see? Um, I guess what what are you missing when you don't go past the thumbnail? Like this is so much more involved than I would have guessed uh, after just looking at the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. nice right. prop Pretty design cool. some props yeah let's see one thing i noticed on this portfolio if you go back out to the main is yeah. the image all the way to the right i think i believe um that's a study from an existing artist mm -hmm. named Sin, Sin Jun hun i can't i never i I butcher his name. Oh, there you yeah, go. There it is. It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There he is on the bottom there. So Thanks. I'm not sure, like, with portfolios, I don't know where you draw the line, Kaysen, for, for including mm -hmm. studies. I tend not to include studies or anything. Yeah, I, I would try to not include it, but things like this is perfect to show on, like, Instagram. Like, something a little more, you know, like, daily things, you know. But when it comes to portfolio, you don't really want to show any, like, study, you know. 
um, you can you can take like great inspiration from the piece and create something new from it. You can that's totally fine. But uh, in terms of like one to one study, it's almost like doesn't really give a value to um, like a director when you're looking at it. You know, yeah. Totally. You you are excellent at at studying, but how does that help my project? Yeah, it... yeah. Because at the end of the day, you you they you want them to hire you. You have to think about on their side, like I, what kind of service can you provide to this director? You know, what kind of problem you can solve? Like things like this would be a lot better to put in your portfolio. But I would go a little bit like deeper into explaining um, the background on the, or, or the world of this location. Because even when we look at it, oh, it's a really cool room, but I don't know um, the rest of the world. Like, is this like abandoned? Is this like in like looks like a doctor kind of thing, like a hospital? Um, but I'm not sure who is the character. Is it for a game? Is it for like live action? Like, we don't really know that yet. Um, it's always good to just show a little bit more of that world, you know? Yeah. What's going nice in this is that there's some life, like uh, mm -hmm. one thing that kills these is when you have a static room or it doesn't yeah. look like it's lived in. This one looks like there's some activity, there's some things going on, but what I think it might still lack is the story. Like Kason said, like what exactly happened or are we supposed to expect to happen in here? And if yeah. it is for the layout of a game, then where's the pathways and show us, you know, what are the obstacles? And I think this is sort of, again, leaning towards, hey, look, I can do this, but I think mm -hmm. that can go further into what is the story, mm -hmm. what's the life. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Weirdly how environments are more about people than than environments sometimes. Yeah. And I feel like this doesn't quite have that. I mean, there's definitely some story elements here that, that I'm curious about. And I love medical illustration. So <laughs> I'm fond of this one. Nice. Is there more to this one? Is there more like another shot neck? That's that a down? Great point. Okay. Here we go. Close up and stuff. Yeah. Oh wow, he's got like 9/11 footage that I I didn't catch that the first time. Okay. Cool. So and there's, you know, he's good. he's adding some points of interest here. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I know what you mean. It kind of um, the sense of genre could be more immediately mm -hmm. obvious, probably. Yeah, it feels a little bit ambiguous. You know, it's like oh, it's something happening, but I don't know. I'm not sure what is it yet, you know? Totally. And I think we may have another study mm -hmm. here. So probably uh, same same comments yeah. applying there. Um, I'm going to, we're probably going to encounter this a few times. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's, it's sort of the fan art question. Although mm. I am pretty sure Usaib is designing like kind of, taking an existing IP and expanding on it. Like this mm -hmm. doesn't seem like it's just fan art. It looks like he actually assigned himself. What if I'm working on Starcraft three and mm -hmm. how would I tackle that? So maybe I will hold my tongue on those comments. Mm -hmm. uh, but I initially kind of dismissed this as fan art, which is a pitfall. I think that, that yeah. gets a lot of us. But maybe I um, I will rethink that actually after after clicking in a little bit. But again, that's that requires somebody to click in and kind of want to take that closer look. Yeah, uh, tough call. Uh, I sometimes think like if, if for a portfolio when you include existing IPs, you kind of bottleneck yourself immediately to saying if you're not interested in this IP. So if you're like trying to get your name out there and, and a director comes across your thing and maybe that's not their thing, they're going to immediately pass over that sort of IP. I, I think what this artist shows is that they have a great deal of ideation and they're not afraid to go in and, and thumbnail and 3D block and all that. And that, that shows great, you know, mm -hmm. wide range of ability, but yeah, not to, not to funnel yourself into one IP or or anything i'd like to see this person expand into the, some of their own designs as well yeah like ip is a little bit kind of tricky like if you i would always try to do like the opposite so if you pick an ip that's sci-fi maybe try to turn it into fantasy you know or pick a fantasy turn it into sci-fi um because if you're gonna do hey let me do a starcraft that kind of like the starcraft but a little bit more push but it's still a little too close you know it, then it become like wait it kind of looked too too similar um, but when you like split it the other way, it's more interesting. Like, like when you tell people, oh, this is like this is Lord of the Ring, but in sci fi, people are like, whoa, cool, let me take a look how that looks, right? But it was like, yeah, it's Lord of the Ring, but it's still fantasy, it's just like higher fantasy. It's just kind of um, 
lost interest a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Totally. Just reskin when in, yeah. when in doubt. Awesome. <laughs> um, beautiful work. Well, let's let's keep moving just so that uh so that we can try to get to everybody. Um, Randy Kaysen and I just quickly checked everything out uh, before we started the stream mm -hmm. and just immediate A plus just for this yeah. little animated dude mm -hmm. in the beginning. So Levi, um, the whole portfolio is quite phenomenal, but that's clever. I had to stop. I double take that. I was like, wait, is that kind of moving? And that's clever. <laughs> You're hallucinating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's not just a blank. He like does some stuff like that. Yeah. That is really cool. A little peek and the smirk is really cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, so really whimsical kind of, uh, you know, heart of a child kind of energy here. He's got some really nice, like, post-production moves using that focal blur really well, mm -hmm. which I actually love with the kind of pencils and fill color feel that it has. Um, mm -hmm. Look how great that foliage is. That is just gorgeous. Nice. And just fun super, super fun stories being told in every frame. Nice. Right? It's really nice. Come on, guys, tear this one apart. What you got? <laughs> <laughs> Been a little tough. There is some. There is a theme that this artist tends to be comfortable working in, which it looks like it's that almost. How do I describe this? It's like the game Limbo, where you're like front to back, layer by layer. Um, yeah, yeah. They're, they're kind of there. Is a lot of these easy front panel shots. I w I'd like to see them mix up with a little more perspective and show that they have that sort of ex oh there it is okay uh, <laughs> levi's like boom it's hard, it's hard to pick <laughs> this one apart if you're you know someone looking for an illustrator nice. this is your this is your guy this is uh this is cool stuff yeah and it looks like they're quite a lot of image too with like different yeah, wow. theme look at that i'm i'm like mm. not halfway to the bottom yet yeah, yeah. i stayed corrected twice huh. now, so i'll just look at these little heads <laughs> <laughs> so i would say actually like i was saying maybe limited uh the amount of image you want to put into hmm. um because sometimes when you put too much it's actually easier for people to spot your weakness like weakness you know like it's like it's like boxing right the more punches you throw the more chance they can hit you um so you want to like calculate really how many you want to put in maybe pick like your best 15 you know and you don't want to uh, right now i see a lot of really nice keyframe um, but then if you show this portfolio, they might be limited you to like, oh, you're the keyframe person, right? Hmm. So you want to show more like maybe like the rough color script, right? Um, character design, more production work as well. The front view, side view, back view. Um, some of the props that you show in an image, you can also do like call out. Um, so you can show them the whole pipeline of how you work versus like, oh, I only do keyframes, you know? Because like for artists like to see, like they... they maybe like three, four paintings, they already can tell, oh, this person can paint. And they probably start looking at the next thing. Okay, what else can they provide? You know? So you want to show more the other side as well. Yeah. I really agree with that uh, comment regarding how many, the more you have, the more they can find something. And and yeah, you know, eventually they'll come across something that isn't strong and they'll say, well, this is, this is the bottom line here. This is, you know, the weakest link. So they mm -hmm. can remember that later if they have a project that might require you to be at high level, but they're like that one painting though. <laughs> so yeah, it's nice right. to go through and purge your work that no longer stands up to what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. keep it simple. Totally. It's like they were probably ready to hire Levi long before they even got to this image. So like, let's not talk them out of it. <laughs> um, I haven't been keeping account, but well, that's a good question what do you guys think the magic number is for for let's say there's that pdf Kason was talking about how, mm -hmm. how many do you think in there i think like around like 13 15 like the max you know and you you wonder like it's funny because it's almost like big medium small you want to like <laughs> um i know keyframe is really cool but you don't need to show all keyframe you really want to show a lot of production work because most of the client i talk to or like art director they're really looking for people that do a lot of like production when you're looking for a job, right? Especially they already have like a popular senior, like people like Kenny Vo, you know, they're doing all the keyframe already. 
um, a lot of time they hire a lot of people just to like, hey, can you do a layout of this environment? Can you do like more props? Can you show me like other stuff, right? Um, so maybe like in that 13, you may put like maybe four to five keyframes and then a couple of props and then more like line drawing and then maybe uh, two pages for college script. Um, so it's like a full package, you know? Totally. Uh, oh, gorgeous work, Levi. I think that's probably good advice though. I didn't, there weren't, any in here that I would say this is an absolute, you know, mm -hmm. dud compared to the other ones, lose it. But maybe it's it's a it's gut check time. Got to pick your thirteen to fifteen very very favorites and put the others in a in a file somewhere. Um, uh, Mike Valencourt, our last uh, guest, who's an art director at, at Wizards of the Coast, had the best comment that I haven't forgotten, which is. Um, he looks for your weakest piece first yeah. <laughs> because he knows that's what he's going to get on that day when you were just kind of tired or had a headache. Like mm -hmm. when you don't fully show up, what, you know, what is that work going to look like? So that just rings in my ears is you're mm -hmm. only as good as the weakest piece in there. Uh, so prune aggressively constantly. The portfolio is a living thing that kind of yeah. always has to evolve and get stronger yeah um, that, that's a really good point because that remind me of uh when i was a student i was talking about, I, I forget it's john john park or james james back um they told me like they they said a uh, student always said like I, I, let me set up uh, the next three months to make a portfolio but they were saying how portfolio they shouldn't you shouldn't do that because every single piece that you're doing should be a portfolio it's just portfolio just mean putting your best piece in your portfolio and it, it constantly evolve as you get go you know, become better and better and better. So that your portfolio, you would just, you know, replace imagery, you know, from time to time, you know, or we touch, you know. Um, so don't get stuck on like, oh, this is my portfolio and I need to make a new one if you get better. Yeah. Totally. Um, cool. Let's move on. Uh, Levi, beautiful work. Yeah, um, awesome. Mike. Uh, Mike is an Academy graduate and a great dude and has some really cool creepy creatures that i had not nice. seen um nice what is uh what is the initial read you guys are getting on mike's landing page here um when i look at it it, it almost feels like they're all kind of similar you know um even the thumbnail right so i would love to see if there's like maybe there's a couple more more close up like a keyframe with lighting maybe a couple more on like sketching of uh, uh, uh creatures maybe painting um, so when you when you zoom out, it doesn't look like when you look at all of these, right? Almost eight of them is just like a standalone character, right? Uh, similar size, similar angle. Um, so if you just try to push different different uh, point of view, you know, zoom in and out, even a different type of work would be would be better, I think. Yeah. Cool. I I can totally see that it does nice. all kind of have a similar yeah. read. Mm -hmm. That is just beautiful, though. Yeah. Yeah, look at those shadows on those eyes. That's so that's well done. Yeah, I, I agree though too. Like, <clears throat> it is obviously a character and creature uh, immediately. That's my thought process, and because uh, I don't I don't see any environments or anything like that. So that mm -hmm. that's their focus. But <clears throat> again, if then that's your focus, I want to see more to each one. Uh, I think a few of them, again, are can be looked at a little bit static. Um, and then if you clicked on any of them, is there's like a what do you call it? A uh, process behind any of them? I'd be curious if you scrolled down if there was. Let's yeah, see. I think I think if you don't have some process, like I wonder, a lot of people have a difference of opinion on this one, but where to draw the line on including process? And I think there, you don't want to put a hundred messy, dirty sketches in your portfolio. But I think in some cases, especially for art directors. Um, they want to see that you can kind of mesh with their process and they want to see the way your brain works. And mm -hmm. um, so adding a few of those kind of things, is, I think, is pretty strong, too, not just the illustration, which I am. Seeing yeah. Here. Yeah. I think showing different stages is really, really important, actually. So they know that how to slot you in. So it's always think about, like, if you are the art director, what do you want to see? It, the main goal is to find a person that can match their pipeline. And if you show the pipeline that matches what they're looking for. Um, it's just easier and a lot of times it has nothing to do with like final actually i know like on our station you see all these people like wow really pretty illustrations and stuff um actually you kind of want to include a lot more looser stuff you know 
Uh, I think a good example for creature, like look at God of War, like Stephen Oakley, you know, the the um, the uh, creature artist, or I think he's a character or something. But like his work is beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. You have some color, you have some painting, you have some oh, line yeah. sketches. Totally. Yeah. Love awesome. that guy. Yeah, even like a batch, right? With those <laughs> sketches with a blue box in the back. It's just a great exploration right um and then do like a like a more like a one shot keyframe of that character would be really really great yeah absolutely right? that's that's kind of my go to like presentation advice is show me like one beauty image yeah. and kind of fill the rest of the sheet with like nuts and bolts problem solving just yeah load that one screen with as much value as you can show the people mm -hmm. who who might be hiring you hey hardy i got to put us on the spot for a minute but um there was a question that came in and I think it might be a decent one. We are right. our longtime uh, veteran of the discord. Joe was wondering if there was a rollover for the, yeah, for the portfolios. And I said, you know, we did mention at the end of that one, we're like, we just were one away from getting to him. I wonder if there's any time we can toss his in. He is strong. I think Casey would love to look at his stuff as well. Joe Zavaleta. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry to, I, I'm putting more on, but uh, yeah. I forgot <laughs> no, that, that. I love that's Joe. all right. Oh, yeah. I am. He's very impressive and always love doing. Oh, nice! Yeah, right. It's uh, awesome. So clean and, and colorful. And that's some. And that's what I like. Even even from a thumbnail, you can see varieties already. Like different lighting, different color. Your call characters, your props, keyframe. You know, something more warmer, cooler, jungle, snow. Right. So it's very nice. There's a I mean, guy that can get a vertical done. I, I remember Case nice. and I was in a mentorship with Case and he's like, stop giving me verticals unless you have an <laughs> <laughs> Here's a vertical done right. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you should tell him, don't do vertical or don't do anything like one point perspective dead in the center unless you're really good at it. <laughs> oh, nice. yeah. I forgot this was like, this is one of those things he had tucked away in a drawer from years ago, but got a lot better in in a few years and wanted to to bring it back to life and and he win awesome. your he won your tournament with this or your competition with that one i think yes handily i i think he he destroyed that particular challenge with that one his it character was, yeah. his uh magic punk characters are really interesting too because oh, cool. Joe, joe's an extremely strong uh illustrator right off the bat but his ideation and like his explorations and everything this mm -hmm. got the workhorse <laughs> That's really cool. Cool. All right. Well, Joe, your your portfolio is laid, so you get you get three compliments from everybody, and then we're moving <laughs> on. No negative feedback. No, it's that's it's right. Really, it's really um, good. yeah. I don't I don't have much constructive for Joe at this point, other than keep doing what you're doing, and mm -hmm. and he's 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 good and launched. He's he's working now, and I nice. think good things will. Will continue to happen for Joe, but yeah. uh, great dude, awesome. Um, okay, Fabiano, you get extra points for having a PDF. Nice. So, cool. We start with our like beauty rendering, our our impressive kind of Keisha. reel them in from a thumbnail mm -hmm. image, and then we're we're demonstrating lots of process work, kind of value for the project what i'm noticing at least is it seems like we have kind of a format this might just be my malfunction for mm. opening this with chrome but i hate how small these are mm -hmm. and i don't know so not, like leaning into the computer yeah. <laughs> right i know what am i doing wrong oh here? there's a is that plus on the bottom of the screen can you yeah would that zoom there us you in? Go. yes there you mm -hmm. go I'm like, this is definitely my fault and not Fabiano's. Okay. That's <laughs> do, more like it. I do feel like like depending on obviously it looks like a lot of environment design stuff. Um, I kinda maybe it's just me, but sometimes I struggle when things are left very 3D if that's what your intent is. But I think some of those initial shots can be a little more pain over as well if you're gonna give us that sort of illustrative. Mm -hmm nature to it when it's left where i can really see the 3d base um i don't know that might be me though yeah i, I think that's that's a 
there's a lot of um, uh, there's like a like a trend now because of everybody like using three D. I think I think it's really good to use three D. It's almost like a must now. You kind of need to like learn it. Um, but always trying to go back to your foundation too, because like even when you look at like the first painting, um, there's a lot of like value structure structure wise value like very dark and um, I think you can paint on top to push the focal point, push the um, fire structure, lighting, storytelling, adding a character in it. Um, and 3D is something that is really useful, but at the same time, it's double edged sore. If your if your foundation is not strong enough, it will make your piece looks really bad. You know, you always need to have that that painting touch at the end to really kind of push that out. You know, like right now when you look at the tree, right? Um, it's a really cool piece, but we don't know, like design wise, it's just a tree in a in a in a church. Um, but I want to know, like, why are we here? Like, uh, are there a character? Is this like where we fight fight? Like fight a boss. Um, like what is the purpose of this location? Um, also, you know, in the game. Totally. I kind of want to understand yeah. the scale of this as well. I'm trying to mm -hmm. look for things that help give me a little bit of scale. And obviously, there it looks like yeah, it's dark, but those look like pews. So I I would have I would think it was um, the scale would be the pews. But you know, adding a yeah. character maybe in the foreground, showing us that they're looking at the tree or going towards mm -hmm. something in the tree. Would yeah, be adding a character in the foreground, also like all those chairs in between, adding like fog and separations, um, it will like pop a lot of silhouette. So it's always about silhouette read. Right now, it's like when you screen your eyes, all you see is like the bright tree. But all this really beautiful environment on the sides is kind of like lost in the dark. Um, and that's where 3D might not help the most. You, you kind of need to just paint it up, you know, adding the atmosphere on your own, just like little touches in here, here and there. Yeah. Totally. And I, I, I'm dying to see this in maybe a few different lighting schemes. Like mm -hmm. as much as a tree with like luminescent leaves, like that is interesting. It, I feel like I'm in like a department store lobby at Christmas time or something with that. So I, I wish it were just like daytime with a hole in the ceiling of the church and like yeah. a ray of light casting yeah. some light on this tree that happened to grow in this sacred place. Like there's, mm -hmm. there's so much cool value that you could do there instead yeah. of we're, we're kind of like shining a spotlight on this, really probably not the most interesting part of the model like this mm -hmm. vaulted ceiling um so cool concept but totally just uh maybe we can use paint to bring a little more warmth and life into it and push those values yeah. and drama and kind of kind of think about like is is so in this environment what is the most important thing it's a tree right even like the secret tree right so the tree right now, the shape is too normal, like for us to be like, whoa, look at that, you know? Um, so you really want to push the scale, push the shapes. If it's about the tree, make the tree like the most badass tree you've ever seen in our life. But what, make, what makes a tree looks cool, right? Runes, yeah, all those like the roots, maybe like breaking down the floor, maybe like cracks and then start growing out of it. Um, I don't know if you guys are too young. But probably us three, you probably know this, like um, Jumanji. Like, uh, whatever yeah. you're going to say, I'm not. <laughs> I know. So, uh, like the viewer maybe is too young, but remember Jumanji, like the old movie when the, the, yeah. the tree coming up from is the it, house? Has it been right? that long already? <laughs> yeah, like like breaking the ceiling, breaking the ground, you know, like um, that will make the, pay, uh, the place just a lot more interesting, you know, like go big or go home, you know, don't, don't I, make it like uh, kind of cool, but like hit it. Hit it hard. I feel like there's a bit of a loss opportunity too with that nice cool light coming from the left. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like that could have been pouring in dramatically and hitting your character right there. Now, bam, you have a silhouette of your yeah. character off the left, and you're you know there's a, just some things. I think this is like I said, this this person is off to a good start, but I think do more, <laughs> do mm -hmm. more now. Yeah, totally. push the idea first. Yeah, don't jump into 3D too early. Actually, like loose sketches, even just drawing mm. the tree, and then because like figure like. Use 3D as a finalize. It's a tool to finish, almost, you know? Ideation, I like to use 2D a lot more. Just like sketching on the tree, you know, a lot faster, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Nice. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, I guess, Reza Hales. I'm not sure if that is your actual name, but that is what you choose to be known by in your portfolio. A very mm -hmm. nice looking portfolio. Um, cool. So, um, wait, what? I said rock and deviant art portfolio. That's right. <laughs> I have not. Respect. 
I got to tell you, I didn't even know what this icon was at first, but <laughs> just, yeah, I, I haven't been on DeviantArt. And yeah. <laughs> Randy, you have a Hotmail <laughs> email address. <laughs> you can't talk to anybody. Come on, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember my last time go to DeviantArt. Yeah. It's never well, else. well I mean, Hotmail. let's not, uh, let's <laughs> not. Cool. I guess the work is is definitely what matters more than the platform. I guess it, the fact that that is, we all had the same reaction to that. Maybe that that is sort of a sign that there's a chance that you could send your work to an art director and they would be like, "Deviant art, wow, you know, I haven't <laughs> seen that in a while." So that could be an easy thing to change if you know right off the bat. Not the most important for sure, but the easiest uh so something to think about there mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. so really crisp and polished and you know a kind of interesting middle ground between cartoony and painterly mm -hmm. that i'm i'm kind of not quite sure where to peg this artist or imagining myself as an art director saying like well what am i hiring this artist for mm -hmm. um so it might be one of those cases where we we could do a better job building the portfolio for the the jobs we're after and sort of picking a lane a little bit although like cable santa taking on this demonic elf is incredibly interesting <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what what do you guys think yeah, I'm totally agree. Um, I think right now a little bit too much, like almost like a portfolio for like commission, you know, like a little bit of here, a little bit there, like a lot of rendering. Um, but uh, in terms of like portfolio for industry like hiring, I think it's good to just make like even pick uh one of the pieces that you like the most, even the center one, and make a project out of it. Just want to build more like oh, there's a keyframe. Let's do a character uh of the center. Let me do like a rendering of the center. Maybe even the weapon that he's using his um vehicles his home base and then do like a shoebox design um so you can basically start off any art that you want but just start making project making more production pieces so people when they look at your art you're not just like illustrator you're like oh i'm a designer you can show how you think how you get a references how you're applying it um that way when when director they, that's what people like looking for you know to hire yeah totally and i i also noticed a a pretty giant uh, time span here. We're going back to 2015 wow. with, with San Apocalypse and, and more recently just back in April. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe it's just time to refresh and kind of uh, pick, pick a lane a little bit more, mm -hmm. I think, but some really nice rendering skills some style and color sensibilities that are nice and eye catching. Um, this one and maybe this one seem like such outliers that it yeah. it almost I was like kind of who is this artist a little bit you know looking at these two they happen to line up perfectly too <laughs> and the baby's in the same pose as the <laughs> as the voodoo doll um, <laughs> both those two threw me for a loop too I was when this pulled up I I thought you know was this a commission for like a kid show up top and then that went mm -hmm. down below somebody like I just want to see some evil stuff um it is like this I you could tell this person has some strong fundamentals but I think that in terms of portfolio I don't know if they know where they're going with it yet um they're kind of like I think like cases that if you have a goal in mind or or an end goal for this mm -hmm. you would have more project-based stuff or more like uh characters that seem to all be in one sort of project or towards one sort of project, like the Santa one would be cool to see elaborated, but yeah. everything is very different. And um, yeah, definitely need some focus. I think this person needs to say, mm -hmm. Hey, this is the kind of character work I want to do. So I'm going to start putting things out that are like that. Yeah. I think a lot of uh, people or students, when they start building portfolio, they jump into art too fast, too quick. Like try to like slow, slow down a little bit, like pause a second think about like what kind of client you want to like attract, what kind of studio you want to apply, what kind of game is it? Like, what do you want to show when, when the artists see your stuff? Like, oh, I'm a character artist, I'm a keyframe artist, uh, I'm really good at doing this and that, right? Um, what do you enjoy doing, right? All this question you should ask 
answer yourself first, then you form a portfolio that can kind of like uh, answer those questions, you know? Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Nice. Let's keep rolling. All right, Timmy. Cool. All right. Timmy is a character artist. So like no problem there seeing what, what Timmy is building his portfolio around. Mm -hmm. um, Already this looks more cohesive to me as characters. Yeah. It's all sort of. Nice. Yeah. I always yeah. love those like little nook to point to show, you know, like, oh, here's the pattern. Here's a tattoo, you know, it's just like there's thinking behind it. Yeah. Design. That's cool. So totally. You've said this a few times, Kaysen, but uh, just to like echo, making it look like it's for a real world project, even if yeah. you invent it for yourself, even if it's not anything that exists, it makes it look like you have been hired to solve these problems. So let's let's show me where this guy lives. Show me the mm -hmm. village he he's from show me what the animal that his pet is kind of picking the thing that is your favorite and show me the rest of the world kind of do some world building around that central thing yeah. really nice rendering though really really cool anatomy and the tattoos are really nice too i love a big yeah. blue four-armed alien as as you guys may know about ah, me i was gonna say that had some hearty vibes to it <laughs> This is fantastic. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, just show more. I just want to see more about that character, you know, like, show the I whole like, like full that. package. Yeah. And I think one thing that you guys can also do is uh, look at other people's work. Like, look in a game. Look at, like, let's say Gozo Tsushima. Look at the character. What kind of artwork do they produce? Not just, like, the art quality, but, like, how do they show it? what kind of work they show it like things like this is awesome like for like league of legends for like you know like show animation show skills you know um so like break it down and then like kind of piggyback from there and then go from there yeah totally um i uh suddenly thought of darren bartley one of my favorite concept artists uh mm. who designed carnivore remember this from nice Sunday yeah Edge? yeah i love that robot exactly um this so sheet right here is is mm -hmm. just He's done all these beauty renderings, so you can see Darren can design and paint, you know, very, very well. But all this value he's bringing to his team with this one, it's just like, yeah, hire this, hire this artist immediately. Uh, so totally, these little like animation callouts are are such a valuable thing to have. Like this is cool <laughs> and awesome, really mm -hmm. expressive. Like just the the poses and movement and little you know smash brothers dust clouds that are getting kicked up with all mm -hmm. this movement it's, it's <laughs> eye-catching mm -hmm. awesome nice. artemis cool. cool so all right i thought so ah we've got a category breakdown here um mm -hmm. let's let's go through each of them I'm always a big believer in like the fewest clicks possible, yeah. the better, like the less navigation that, that you have to do the, the greater your odds of, of, you know, getting the person you want to see your best work, actually finding it. Um, but the rollover thumbnail just saved me there. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Yeah, I agree. I always, I, I mean, when you go to the website, you just want to see like right away almost. You don't want to click too many things. Like, um, that has to be honest, it has nothing to do with art too. Like, even when you go to like Amazon or something, I just want to go directly to the to the thing that I want to buy. You know, I don't want to like fish. You know, look for it. Um, so yeah, hundred percent. That's right. I don't have time to click. <laughs> I, I, I do buy immediately for organization too, though. Like, uh. I do like when things are organized and mm -hmm. if you look for specific something, you know, if you come as an illustrator or someone that needs illustrations and you're going to hit it. I, mm -hmm. I do think like the widest variety, depending on what you're, I think Hardy, we've talked about this. If you're freelancing it and you're just trying to get, catch all things in your net, then yeah, having a big wide variety of things is good. But if you're specifically mm -hmm. going for a certain 
type of project, then you want to limit yourself. But I, I'll probably take more of a backseat to Artemis here because I've Artemis I know very well, and I think he would benefit more from your guys's thought process. <laughs> I think you heard mine like thirty or forty times. <laughs> I mean, there's always going to be a pro and con, pros and cons, but I think uh, it's good to categorize. But maybe like even use one of those websites like Big Picture. You can just slice to the right and then just like illustrations. So you don't need to click into it. You know, you can just swipe or, you know, to, to show more work. Um, but yeah. Cool. Totally. Um, there's just, there. I think there's a, a bit of a volume issue too, probably. Like, I think there's, we're probably looking at dozens and dozens of individual yeah. pieces. So it might be a bit of a kind of, curating thing or can, um can you can you actually go by the graphics like the graphics one that you were looking at earlier i'm gonna point on something so graphics these i don't think you need it but it's always good to show like you know when you play the games your icons and stuff you know like hey here's a little coin like gold coins or like like little chess so you replace all this into like game element or even like uh anime element would be better like ui or something um, right now these look like like standalone like sticker you know almost like little little patches right um but if you're like related back to you know if you're doing animations like animation stuff or you know phone iphone games or even like games you know that would be better yeah see now on the description to the right he said he he's making his own stickers and merch so i think that's mm -hmm. exactly that. yeah yeah so that's good to call that up but um mm -hmm. I think I agree with Hardy. There's so much here that it's, yeah. again, you're opening yourself up to someone finding something that's not going well. And I think putting your best foot forward and then limiting all the rest, or as we all heard a thousand times, killing your babies a little bit, like just get rid of the, <laughs> yeah, just shave back some of the stuff, even if it hurts. I think when I did a mentorship with someone recently, they made me go through my Instagram and they made me delete 100 posts and, <laughs> and it hurt every bit of it hurt because I remember posting those going, oh my God, I'm, I want to you know grow my base and I love this work and I had to kill them all. So, and it all turned out great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always good to have a list when you think about it because like when you come to art, there's like composition, story, lighting, color, design, right? Pick the one that kind of have all those, you know, in it. If it's, if it's one's lacking, oh, this one looks really nice, like color, but composition sucks just to get a, it is too risky, you know? Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um, right. So got to be coming at it like you're being judged by your, your weakest piece. And I think, so I think Artemis might, might need you to like decide what, what jobs it is you're going for. Cause you've, you're doing many things well here. It's just sort of like, if I am a concept art, art director, you know, I'm I'm not sure if that is you or if you are sort of that, but also all of these other things, and mm -hmm. that that can make it hard. Sort of like dilutes the effect of having a more targeted portfolio. But what you could do is just kind of make a PDF for each arena that you enjoy working in, and kind of have that as your targeted. Mm -hmm. Like when a job comes up that you want to go after if it's a concept art job send them this pdf or yeah. illustration graphics whatever yeah. and something when you go back to the home page mm -hmm. make sure the photo that's on that page like let's say the is it the, the one in the middle of the mushroom one yeah i think okay. like this right here like it's such a like a weird crop you know i think right in here there's so much good content but the cover of that uh, page is just kind of like weird like wait what are we looking at you know um, so make sure that has to look really, really good to be on the cover, you know? Yeah. That's a good point. Like Artemis, your Rose pistol, for example, is so much more, I think, impressive as a design and a rendering. Then mm -hmm. uh, that's a good point. You're giving a lot of homepage real estate to essentially, you know, some, some rough concepts on a mushroom cool though they are and actually really nice shape design now that I'm spending a moment with it, but Totally. There, there are probably more impactful yeah. pieces that could be right in the middle of everything. Mm -hmm. I'm kind sometimes, of thinking, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, uh, sometimes I would even like just design the page, like the, the cover page, like just grab all the mushroom, reorganize them, 
get a nice title, you know, little color background, uh, mm-hmm. just for the cover, you know, yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. I think if you include photos that are cropped out or like you have pieces of missing, it's kind of an immediate like, okay, that it's not something you want. It's the same thing like for those who like use Instagram is getting your thumbnail to be the, you know, a portion of it or something that um, fits in well with the surrounding thumbnails. But when you have like things like this, I think it, you know, you have your mushrooms are cropped out, you have your pottery on the right cropped out. So like I, I don't necessarily think that works and just redesigning a cover for these would probably go a long way. As well. mm-hmm. Yeah. And when I look at your work, I think it's almost like a little bit too much of everything. I can tell like you're still kind of like learning a lot of new stuff. Like I think for you to keep like studying, right? Try to focus on like just do a light environment for now, you know, until you get like a good compositions, good lighting, then move into like lighting, move into like do things like one by one. If you if you jump too fast from like props to environment to color, um, it's almost like playing a game that you have a character that have a stack on strength and then and then intelligence and then dex and then like what kind of character are you building? Are you building a tank or are you building a you know you're nowhere you know not strong enough to be a tank or not strong enough to be a, 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 a ranger, right? So try to like focus a little bit slowly and grow that you know like next step, yeah. I agree too because you can see with Artemis the environment sketched down on the right versus the rocks, which I think are newer. The line mm-hmm. work improved even in that short amount of time. So you know that'd be my my tip to Artemis is to continue focusing on that one thing because you can already see some pretty quick development. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Nice. Cool guys, let's uh, let's jump. All right, Nishant. Cool. All right. <laughs> Variety, um, different zooming levels. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, kind of cool. We have like a logo. So, oh, yes. at a glance, I am thinking it is possible that this artist was hired to work. Like this could possibly be paid work, which I think is that thing we are trying hardest of all to communicate in our portfolio is that mm-hmm. I'm already a professional and I have industry experience so just the quality of this one in particular and the little game logo that i think that's a pretty decent selling point for that Mm -hmm. um you know i little tricks like that the little head games we have to play to project the impression of experience is a big part of this that that maybe it's it's more like subconscious than I mean, your work has to be awesome. It has to be presented well. But mm-hmm. I think there is a little bit of psychology and kind of head games as well to kind of um, engineer that perfect impression in your viewer, uh, especially somebody who's considering hiring you. Uh, so little things like that, I think, go a long way. I'm not saying go make a logo and try to like, you know, fake like it was a video game that you just made up for everything in your portfolio but it can be a powerful thing to kind of suggest yeah Yeah. presentation is always really important either like it helped you a lot or it just messes you up you know nice totally really cool um i'm Oh, I I love this. Wait, pause. Go back up one. I know this. Cool. uh, Yeah, little animation. Look how cool. That's just so cool, right there. Nice. I'm. I don't have enough animation in my portfolio. I'm realizing. (laughs) Yeah, I think there's a lot of like cool stuff going on here too. In the last one you were reviewing, uh, I think. I really like. Yeah, that guy. So. uh, the one next to it, though, with the hood. I wanted right to go back and make yeah. a comment on this one. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so scrolling down, I really like all the information that's going on here. But the one thing I wonder if it's needed is if you go down to where, like, he's got all this breakdown. One more. Uh-oh. Uh, I think I hit an ad, but oh. <laughs> right. I'm going to buy some right. textures. <clears throat> yeah. Right here. I, I don't know. I think, like, once you add too much of this, like, the boot design, the the curtain hooks, all that makes sense. But then when you do like a hood turnaround, I question: Do you need a hood turnaround? Because the hood looks mm-hmm. just like it does in the front. Like you know what I mean? It's a hood. Yeah. I think some of these things give us again, give us what is necessary, and try not to 
pour it on because then you're just opening yourself up for mm -hmm. someone to dig a little deeper. But just in general, like all these cutout and designs and fo focus things are really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and the weapon design for each one seems to tell its own story. It's very unique. And watch out for the, the bar. Watch out for this is the presentation as well. When you screen your eyes, the red is so strong that you can actually lost the shape of the hood. So, um, yeah, watch out for it. Just read. Yeah. I was getting that his, I mean, I, I was getting that his arm got ripped off, maybe yeah. like a giant blood splatter in this like cavity there. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great point. Maybe we can chill. I, I love a good stripe kind of holding little mm -hmm. supporting figures. But yeah, it can be too loud for sure. And it that especially evokes blood splatter, which maybe yeah. was deliberate. Uh, but I'm not I'm not sure. I'm also wondering, we're mentioning curtain hooks a lot here, and I'm not sure if we need that. That's suddenly making me wonder if I had the entire genre wrong for this. I was taking mm. this to be kind of like, you know, historically grounded. Um, yeah. But are we saying post-apocalyptic? I'm not really sure. Yeah, that's a good so, point. I'm not sure if it needs that. It, it might just be one of those mm -hmm. things where I was totally on board, but then I'm like, well, wait a minute. Did I just not get this? And did the artist kind of, I don't know, did we miss a genre cue somewhere? Mm -hmm. So um might be one of those rare examples where less information might might have helped more. Yeah. And just really focus on read. Like try to when you make a portfolio, try to screen your eyes and or make it really small. Um this feels a little picky, but if you go up a little bit for the illustrations, the keyframe of this character, yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. When you screen your eyes, the hot spot is like at the bottom of the right corner. Mm. Right. And then you kind of lose a lot of like that character silhouette. So uh, for this, it's actually better if you tone down the hot spot and then get some lighting behind, you know, some sort of like warmer light, just pop some silhouette, get some rim light and bounce down the other side. Um, things like this, uh, I think looking at uh, John Wallen uh, will be awesome. You know, he's a really good painter, design everything. And uh, his, his care, I always love the character that he kind of painted. There was like very nice, um, like bounce like and 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 background. Yeah. Uh, do I have the right guy here? Yeah. So when you look at like, any one of those like characters that have like a dark background, even the robots, it's just yeah. beautiful. You know. That's awesome. Cool. I had not heard of him. He's awesome. Yeah, I'm John Wallen's. Hang on to that one. Amazing. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's keep rolling. All right. Nice. So this is our first one. I, it seems to be kind of more sparse. Like, I think you simply need need more work. I'm wondering how, what the lifespan of these oh, is. Cool. Oh, and there's no uh, there's no date. But wow, yeah, that's, that's some really cool. nice. Ink. Ooh, it's a, it's a comic, cool. Man, I tried to do a comic. Those those are hard to do. <laughs> you got to know a little yeah. bit of everything. <laughs> For sure. That's oh, cool, that's though. Great. Look at all that. Yeah, wow. <clears throat> so cool. jumping from kind of uh, oldest to most recent. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you what this person wants to be, though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like having comic there is really cool, but at the same time, just kind of like, do you want to be comic artist? Like, because when you see comic, all I'm thinking is maybe you want to be like a storyboard artist, maybe. Um. But I don't see other storyboard, you know, work. But there's like paintings. It's a little bit ambiguous. What are you trying to go for? Totally, you know, it's like a character sheet. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I definitely think if they are looking to be hireable, there's got to be some sort of focus. I'm not really entirely sure what they want to do, mm -hmm. but they do. I mean, obviously, they do a lot of things really cool. Uh, illustrations should give us more. <laughs> Maybe, I'm wondering if if he kind of yeah grouped it by category mm -hmm. but it's like no no two i mean it's hard to say if they're even all by the same artist you know it's yeah. such a it's kind of amazing actually that that you can be this versatile but i agree it, it creates a portfolio that feels kind of all over the place but 
each one impressive in their own right. And this might be a good kind of PDF solution where you sort of have one for each, each lane, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, totally maybe kind of narrow the focus and just build around that, that kind of creative project out of it. Uh, show me more about this character's world or this one. Yeah. Um, obviously you can tell a great story. You can draw, you can ink, uh, you know, shot design really well, composition. So it seems like there is an awful lot of skill being demonstrated here. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of, <laughs> that's awesome. We just sort of have to <laughs> have to do the work and fill this screen up. Um, actually, that is that is kind of my metric for how many pieces do you need, is I think these two bars need to be full in your art station. Otherwise, mm -hmm. the emptiness is so noticeable that it's kind of like, okay, yeah. well, this, this artist is getting started, but they just haven't, haven't done the work yet. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so much work within these things that I know that's not the case, but that's, that's the impression it creates. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is a good example of a portfolio site that might kill your ability to get hired because, and, and it's not because your artwork, but it's because I just don't know. I yeah. wouldn't know where to go. I wouldn't know what they were able to do or not do or wanted to do. And I would probably just not waste much time on that. I'd move on because mm -hmm. the focus, you know, the project focus or what I can bring you on my team for is just not there to me. Yeah. Cool. Nice. All right, Joey. Uh, Joey is is one of my uh, current academy students and really solid creature and character yes. skills. I love that pterodactyl thumbnail. Uh -huh. Isn't that awesome? The big, oh. the big yellow. I oh, know. Mm, mm. Yeah, these are cool. Oh, oh nice. that's interesting. I hadn't seen that. Nice. Cool. Yeah, they, okay. So their anatomy. Yeah, this is cool. I think for, for this one. Oh yeah, nice. I was gonna say like a little bit more sketching stuff would be good, but also um since we look up there's like maybe four main characters. I mean main creatures, right? Like mm -hmm. three to four. Uh, oh right. Um, here. Yeah, I think it'd be great if you do a page of each uh each creature doing different things like drinking water um sleeping you know just like really showcasing the, because like when you keep looking down right I, you realize oh it's the same pose so sometimes it could be like wait up a second it looks a lot but it's like only the same piece of artwork being keep using you know over and over and over um so maybe having a page just like quick sketching uh, of them doing different things oh here it, it is there yeah you. yeah yeah it's kind of like that maybe like separate in the three pages too yeah um, another one yeah, I love doing content. that is, and I guess Joey did this too, but show, awesome. show the mother and the baby of whatever the creature uh -huh. is. Yeah. And everybody always loves that. And it's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. Okay. This is an incredibly deep post with a lot of value. Mm -hmm. This is so weird and terrifying. Actually, <laughs> If you pick this thing up and squeeze it, this is what happens. Yeah, I think these are great. I think if you like suffering three pages, even blow some of this like bigger, like because yeah. there's a lot of interesting idea here, you know. Yeah, it it feels like it's it's kind of buried a little yeah. bit, maybe. Uh, cool. So Joey, possibly like more posts, but not quite it looks like there are like 20 plus images in mm -hmm. each of your posts. This is exactly what I'm talking about though. We've, we've got characters, you're showing different looks, you're showing some of the tech that lives in their world and you can like yeah, match the droid to the character. Like that is mm -hmm. awesome. Um, oh, so cool. Yeah, really yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Now this uh, sizing is, is a lot better than the, than the last one, you know, you can see boy, what yeah. happened. The amount of exploration to the, each character, and there's so much that had given this person has given thought into their development. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I really um, like that triangular droid. Um, cool. I do uh, love that. Check, 
Yeah, I do, I do too. Animal. Just uh -huh. yellow skill. Nice. Yeah, cool looking. Uh, Joey, we I don't want to uh, nerd out on your work for too long, but really impressive. I, I hadn't seen a lot of that stuff from you, so that's that's really awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. I had seen some of these characters, but beautiful work. Yeah. This is nice. All right. Jose. Um, everybody doing okay, by the way? We're a little past the halfway mark. Um, don't want to keep you guys on all night, but I'd love to try to get through the rest of these. But um, everybody doing okay? Yeah. 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 Cool. Definitely. Good, good, all good. right. Um, what do we think of, of this one? I thought that was Cortana at first. Lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. I see characters. I see environments. I see fan art. I think there's, again, too much. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily think some of the environment shots are very strong. So I think I'm trying to figure out, you know, it looks like this person does like to create characters, creatures. It looks like they put a, a lot of their thought there. Um, and the environments are sort of in the back end to me. I think, again, finding out what exactly you, your focus wants to be and then, you know, pushing that skill level forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, and some of these look like they're from the same project, but I'm not sure if they're in the same project, you know what I'm saying? They like could be, you know. Um, so if they are from the same project, maybe like make a logo or something so we, we know which batch of work related together, you know, or they're not at all, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I totally agree. Some of the environments, especially the black and white one, I think it's a little bit too kind of foggy and hazy, you know, um, just watch out. I know soft brush is really, really fun to play with, but just watch <laughs> out. Sometimes we go a little too crazy with those soft brush and color dodge, you know, that was definitely me. I was so fascinated <laughs> that I didn't have to rub charcoal to get this airbrushy <laughs> effect that, yeah. There's... There was some airbrush abuse, but that's yeah, okay. <laughs> those soft brushes give you mud. And like one of the best things I did in my growth was I made myself use only a hard brush for like a couple months in a row. Mm. I would refuse to use soft. And that really helped me with like silhouette shape design, making mm. really decisive decisions. Just if you're having this problem, like a lot of these environments have a lot of fuzzy muddiness, go hard brush for a while. You will improve. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, you, it's sort of like a, you need to clean your glasses kind of effect, like glaucoma <laughs> vision or something. Um, cool. Yeah, totally. I think kind of a focus, sort of making it all look like it comes from a project, which I think a lot of this does. So maybe whittle down and, and build around that could, mm -hmm. be, could be a cool way forward. Yeah. Awesome. And then I think just one quick thing, like last yeah. thing about the work is, just watch out um, the darkest dark. I think uh, from your work, it seems like you tend to use a lot of like dark, like 100% black. Try to avoid using too much. Like the darkest dark, maybe like 80%, you know? Um, when it's super dark, it is really create a lot of like too, too contrast. Like almost like screen your eyes, you, you, you almost lose everything, you know? Yeah, totally. Just uh, I, there's so much nice rendering on this one, but I yeah. can't see it. Uh, now you can see it. Yeah, look at that. Uh, that's really impressive mm -hmm. too. Cool. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Sorry to rush you. Trying to trying to keep us uh, moving forward. Oh, no problem. So, um, I mean, obviously, we've kind of got that a whole lot of empty space on the home page, but then there is a lot of artwork. Oh my god! <laughs> Sudden <laughs> incredible change in tone in three images. Um, yeah. So. Maybe, you know, some of this can be put to better use just filling up your homepage rather than being mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. under one cover. I uh, mean, this is certainly NFTs, and that's what they've labeled this as. And I think I you totally would bottle yourself that. right into that category, mm -hmm. right into it. I mean, if you're doing NFTs, you're an NFT guy <laughs> with those ones. So I think with this one, you have these environments with some of the same fundamental issues as we just discussed. Mm -hmm. and then you have the page of NFTs. So I don't think with this portfolio, um, you're helping yourself very much because you've, you've limited yourself in a couple of ways here, I think. Yeah. And I think some of the idea is a little too crazy or too vague for me to understand what's going on, you know? It's like, what am I looking at? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. Right. 
Cool. Yeah. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I'd be making the, the same same points there. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, Shia. Um, let's see. Mm. That is Flash very rocket. nice. And plenty of... Oh, cool. So this is a GIF. This is mm-hmm. animated. Which I like. I think that I'm, if I'm imagining I'm an art director looking to hire, that is good for me to see. Although, let's see, can I actually look at these thumbs? I think I'd like to see the thumbnails and maybe the sketch, like just maybe add a few more stills. Yeah. I keep waiting for mm-hmm. the thumbnails to come back so I can check them out again. Mm-hmm. Same here. I think if you're going to put a GIF in your portfolio, then have the things that you're showing in the GIF as separate assets too, so that if we don't want yeah. us to wait for the cycle, we can just scroll down and look at what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Oh, this one's cool. So Mm -hmm. help me out is I know I saw it says League of Legends fan art. Are these actual existing League of Legends characters or is she just like inspired by the style in creating her own stuff? I think based on the what she wrote is a is a champion skin that she just created. It's based on the character. So, okay, on the game. Yeah, I think that's. An important distinction. That's a really nice robot arm. Oh, nice! This I really cool. like these. This, this, Dude, is yeah, much better. I think, yeah, I think this lie is a lot stronger than the splash art. You know, um, there's a lot too. more design into it. There's a lot more production work to going goes into it too. Like I know the splash art. Like everybody want to do splash art. You know, it's beautiful, but at the same time, it's really pretty tough. You are, you know, you are fighting with those splash art artists. So the quality bar is really, really high. It has to do like you know do with like good color, good composition, good anatomy, right? Um, at the same time, having perform uh, like production work, probably a little bit easier to get higher, you know, because there's a lot more thing they can provide that is not splash art, you know. Um, so yeah, this is great. Yeah, and you're really good at this. That's this page. Or pages. <laughs> yeah, these are great, man. Cool. All right. Nice. More. Shia, right. Do more, more of this, please. <laughs> yeah, more uh, different character, different character type as well, like a tank, a support character, a assassin character, and just explore like even they could be the same world, just different type of weapons and you know, yeah. That's awesome. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Let's okay. see. Okay, so no, I'm immediately kind of at a crossroads of. What do I do? Do I want to click into these or do I want to start mm-hmm. navigating around? And so there's some overlap. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you need this functionality. Like this kind of mm-hmm. doesn't seem to do anything for mm-hmm. you. So put as much of your very best stuff right in front of their faces as, as immediately as you can. And I think that pretty much always helps you. Um, <laughs> I love the like description and <laughs> now look guys, you are clearly wondering where the blur is on this one, but hold up. <clears throat> and <laughs> I love, love What's the, the description underneath. It said I was, I was reading that one right underneath that big one update on my AI policy on our station. I will refrain from blurring my paintings in the future since there seems to be a general consent on the adjustments made by ours. Okay. Um, all right, sorry. I just wanted to see if that had anything to do with the sort of big message mm. on top. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, so it's a study. I think we've we've kind of talked about that. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, here we go. So, yeah, let's see that. Put open for jobs. So that tells me this this is you. This is what you are going after. What's up with the big sample thing? Right. Uh, I'll be, you know, clearly some kind of a copyright protection. Yeah, maybe there's a way yeah. that I'm gonna take this. I think that kind of, I man, I don't know what the thoughts are behind it. I'd be curious to know why the artists put all those on there, but I think that's really distracting when you're showcasing your mm-hmm. ability to storyboard. Yeah, I think it's like this is a great work. Um, but instead of putting all of this like in like like a little folder, 
Um, you can even do like little shots, you know, like some like just paint one of these up, you know, um, do like a black and white um, graphic read kind of kind of kind of study of your own uh, storyboard. A good sample to look at, uh, Dan Milligan. I knew you were gonna say it, <laughs> dude. Like just, just when you look at the master, the, all those masters, just follow what they do, man. <laughs> this That's guy is Yeah, just like he's do a lot of storyboarding, but. We look at all these, right? There's like boards together. There's like just illustration of a moment. Um, this close up color, black and white, some painted. For you, you can even do some like line drawings as well. So show varieties, even different type of projects, military, fantasy, you know, uh, some alien stuff, you know. Um, so yeah, I think that would be really, really good. So cool. Oh, awesome. Love death and robots. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's uh, incredible. Just, I, mean, I look at that guy like and I'm just like, I've been so inspired and I try to mm -hmm. troll him. I'm like, I can't do it. He's just too good. Yeah, he's amazing. <clears throat> cool. Um, yeah, and this one needs to help us understand like what exactly they want to do. Because then back out in the main like list of things you can look at, I think I saw some characters and um, in their like whole lineup. And I think... I think there's just a, a lot going on here that could be sort of redirected. Can you go to the main like list of stuff again? Yeah. Uh, also a lot of, a lot of like empty white space yeah. on those pages that we could just blow things up and like and that character right there. I think right if I get closer to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I feel these are really under render kind of like, fundamentally they're not there yet so i'm not sure i would have this as like my stuff i would focus on getting my anatomy down or getting my ability to render because i think there's a lot lacking on those ones where it seems like they may have spent more time wanting to mm -hmm. get comfortable storyboarding and stuff i think yeah. sometimes just trying to slow down a little bit don't jump into render too early just right. do a quick sketching you know like drawing um if you can if you can make a drawing look really badass you you can actually get higher, to be honest. Like you can get higher just by line drawings. If your line drawings just killed it, right? Then once you get the line drawing, the structure is good, then you worry about, oh, the value, and then the painting, and then the color, and then all those like advanced technique that on top of the structure, yeah. Absolutely. You, you, can, you can survive being a great designer and a bad painter, but not the other way around. Yeah. Cool. All right, uh, Dan Milligan one to check out for this artist all right harrison lots of stuff cool Ooh. i know right so right it immediately nice. might feel like well i don't know i i don't want to just immediately say like overload too much pick a lane because there's lots of different skills being demonstrated here and mm. actually a lot of these renderings are quite impressive well what's that rule they say if you can do it all then do it all really well <laughs> but if you can't mm -hmm. like and you start to limit I, i'm i'm trying to find out if this person does it all well and there's characters looking cool these illustrations oh, um, these are cool great. Oh, oh, these a are 3D. like a 3d like a 3d head oh okay oh that's interesting the textures are so painterly i didn't yeah. get that Nice NPR. That's right. There's creature. So, huh. I think that might just be Harrison's like process. It looks like a lot of these are, are that. <laughs> Sweet mm -hmm. roller skates. <laughs> Medieval <Yes>. roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> Those are pretty funny. That's fun. Aha. <laughs> wow. Nice. There you go. I'm stumped on this. <laughs> I, I, I kind of, I don't know what to, oh. what to, how to help this person. Environment. Yeah, I think a little bit too much. Um, because it, on your titles, it looks like you want to be the 3D generous, but some of this like 2D. So it's kind of, kind of confusing. It's like, wait, do you want to do a painting or do you want to do like all 3D? Um, but I do, I did enjoy some of those like cow, you know, some of those 3D actually looks really nice. And if you want to focus on that, I would just say like, if you're going to do a creature, just do like a bunch of different creatures, but in similar uh, production and line, you know, that art style in 3D. So you, you become like, oh, I'm 
three D character artists or three D environments, environments just all environments, you know. Um, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, pick one, you know. Yeah. Cool. They're definitely three D. Hey, that's cool. Yeah. One piece. It's cool. Mm hmm. Nice. All right. Hopefully that is that is constructive, Harrison. But cool stuff. I don't. We will not see another portfolio like this. Oh, Raphael. Great dude, great artist. Um, so, yeah, Raphael, I'd say at a glance, I think we just need to keep adding work. And I know you are there. It, you're going to kill me for this, but I think your rock might be one of the more impressive renderings from thumbnail view that I could see just because it looked so loose and painterly and interesting. Um A lot of these are. I think that one is is my favorite. So, Casey and I, in in my mentorship, I push designing rocks really <laughs> weirdly hard, just because it. If you can use fundamental, really strong shape design principles to make something boring as a pile of rocks look really good, Mm -hmm. it can make a really valuable portfolio piece, and it it shows those. art directors that you can do those mundane nuts and bolts tasks. You can design yeah trash cans, walls, and park benches, uh, as well oh yeah as spaceships. Um, so that's, uh, that's where a lot of these rocks are coming from, that's awesome but, uh, yeah. uh-huh Yeah, because like surprisingly, those boring stuff that you don't want to do, probably going to be like 80% of your work when you start just starting. You're going to have a Simon, hey, man, you want to be a trash can kind of guy? And you'll be designing trash can for the last like the next like six months, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right that's happened all the time. So, so yeah, just I know it's boring, but to me, I actually like working on those because it's almost like a challenge. Like how can you turn this bench to be like really badass, you know? Like Star Citizen, like those, those guys are really good at those. Like poster making all those like really cool asset for the city is a really good thing to just like practice. Yeah, nice. Oh, cool. definitely Yeah. and every world building takes a lot of work there's a a whole world that needs to be designed Yeah. and that's uh that's where the jobs tend to be Hmm. Color schools. cool Oh, okay. Okay. I think some of these can maybe uh just give a couple more keyword. Like what is it? Just give a title and then like throw in a keyword that like what it's supposed to be like. Because right now I look at it, it looks really cool shape, but I'm not too sure what I'm looking at too. Is it like a villain? Is it like something that we have to fight? Or is it like a creature, robots, you know? Right? Um couple more keywords and also put in some um uh, reference photo to show that where you get the inspiration. So Your goal of a portfolio is not just showcase how good or how badass your painting or drawing skill is, it's actually how you solve a problem. So the more that you can focus on that is better. Like just show people like, oh, I saw this kind of photo, I use this kind of keyword, I combine them and then do this kind of exploration and then how from jump from like silhouette, line joints, painting, and then like maybe a little bit like a um, couple of shots of this character doing different things, animation, attack. And um, so show like really how you think rather than how you paint and draw, yeah. That's awesome. Nice. All right, cool. Nice stuff, Raphael. Yeah, looking good. All right. Um, cool. Oh, yeah, Pierre. All Nice. right. So, I'm, Def. I'm, my eyes are, like, drawn to the titles and logos and stuff first Mm. just to see what kind of subconscious cues that gives me. And I... it does create that impression that this was a, you know, a whole project of a world that Pierre created. This is cool. I like this. Yeah, I like this one too. I So. think this this um this piece of art or like this project have potential to expand from you know like creating the world building, the village, even different type of body types. You know, maybe some of them have horns, some of them have fins and stuff, you know, um, different type of tattoo, maybe like some of them are, are darker blue on the top, lighter blue at the bottom. Um, so we can create varieties of like this group of people, you know. Um, I think the silhouette right now does feel a little bit too humanoid, so you can still push quite a lot, you know, just just
get more. Um, even think about like the culture, you know, tattoos, patterns. Like, um, look at Hawaiian people, you know, stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. it's a little bit samey, like with the character, it's the same, but it's in different. Like, it's just laid out. Here, yeah, three of them now. There's another one spinning. Like, yeah, variety, variety would be nice. Yeah, and you can also explore. Like, let's say they all live in the village. Everybody have a different job. Some of them is like fishermen. Some of them is like hunter. Some of them could be like, oh, he swim really fast because he had this like long legs. Oh, this guy is like the guy that carry or build houses because he's just like a big ass arm. Right? You're really, really strong top body type, right? So it's good to show that though. So even like just it's the same group of people. You can see they build differently and they have a function behind that character and there's a different culture, um, things that they believe um, from clothing and patterning and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, this is such a cool world that you have like started with this guy. Just show us show us more of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're getting oh, cool. very architectural here. This is yeah. a very, quite a really? change of of pace here. This person does not lack in the ability to create three D. <laughs> no. <laughs> mm. Nice. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I think they can just keep Plus, going. And... Grandpa doesn't wear the same thing every day. <laughs> Up if it was done by Netflix. <laughs> exactly. Um, nice. Awesome. Uh, so, Pierre, I think we all really love this latest thing of yours, and I think it looks like a visible step forward for you just like in world building so mm-hmm. i would just drill down on this this is extremely cool but yeah. every idea Kazen had is awesome so but i would expand on that and you've already like branded the whole thing it's possible mm-hmm. this is something you were you were hired on so maybe this is all happening already but i think a portfolio can be built around this uh for yeah. sure that's that's a big world you have kind of stepped into and it's just he's cool 100 percent, yeah awesome nice oh colton cool so colton right he's kind of walking that line between 2d and 3d um and colton and i have talked about this i it's kind of my preference but i also think this is kind of a truism that just it takes a lot of work to make 3d art have anywhere near the same like warmth and personality and expressiveness as a painting does. Mm -hmm. So I would try and kind of bring a little more brushiness and painterliness into your stuff. Uh, But I actually, the shots you're designing, they keep getting better every time I, I see your portfolio again, but um You've kind of heard that from me. Let me, uh, guys, what are your like two second impressions on on Colton's mm-hmm. splash page here? Cool. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, I think uh, kind of similar to what you're talking about. I think it has a good base. It's just missing the paint over, you know? Um, the 3D is really cool. It's just establish the composition, the storytelling. But when it comes to like making things feel very alive and and just like, it's just need that massage coming from the brush stroke, even like a little bit photo bashing. Um, when you have people in your scene, make sure the people have a good pose, you know, especially when you look at like the, um, is it called thumbnail or like the, the title, uh, the one on the top. Yeah. The two people uh, running. Oh yeah. Yeah. You see like, the pose, even the guy is just kind of like running awkwardly, kind of like very robotic, you know, because it's, it's, it's still a 3d um, in my opinion, probably better if you just find a person or even shoot yourself just like, Take a photo, you just run in front of the camera, just pause in the middle, like that probably a better pose than trying to make like a perfect pose in 3D, you know? Um I'm so glad that you do that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do that all the time. I was I uh when we when I'm working with like Call of Duty, um we we just like bought a bunch of guns and then I just shoot my um co-worker. <laughs> yeah, we were like, hey, can you post it like this? And then like just I just do like a low angle. You know, like some back view, you know, like I, I just do that all the time with my wife, you know, um, and I have a lot of toys. That's why you see my room is a bunch of toys. Literally, they're all for like, like posing, you know, yeah. 
Yeah, just like get get. It's always better when it comes to 3D. I don't like 3D people too much, especially in action. It's just like in real person, it's just a little bit better, you know. Yeah. I I think it's that this this guy's spine is just like yeah, like two by four straight right here. So yeah, you're totally right. And the slightest little thing that's not quite right, just it's the only thing anyone can see with mm -hmm. how relatable people are. But, but uh, yeah really strong are these compositions and like these shot setups are really nice and i think like you guys said all that's missing now is paint overs and making it not feel like shot straight from you know 3d i would love mm -hmm. to see them add their own touch of 2d yeah artwork there. Mm -hmm. i'm wondering I like, mean, like taking this and if you went to the filter and made it like poster or posterize it or did like what is that one uh filter it's a poster edges oh, like high pass or something go go up to i'm just curious go up to filter and oh. even like like go to filter gallery like the cutout filter or something yeah and then give me like um poster edges down there mm. and mess with that like even that will give you some like sort of a baseline or mm -hmm. a base like to start messing with i always either do cutout paint jobs or some poster thing if I want to take 3D and begin to work it back towards mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. But you still, a lot of work goes into it still. So yeah. there's no easy way. You still got to understand those fundamentals. Yeah. Usually when it comes to like, I have to do nature, so grass, trees, I always use photo, you know, especially trees because like 3D trees to me just look kind of weird. They all looks like, you know, the branches doesn't look right. You know, I'd rather get like a tree PNG, just slap it on and start building from there, you know? um so yeah even sky sky just get like a really beautiful you know like a sunset or something probably works a little bit better yeah awesome cool nice. all right um our last one stavros who it's like uh 3 a.m for him so he's not seeing this live <laughs> but i'm 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 no he'll be glad that uh that his stuff made the uh we, we didn't quit before we got to his. So um, really skillful creature artists. Actually, Stavros and Joey are classmates right now, and mm. I think a lot of their stuff is pretty similar. Um, I thought these were really nice, too, mm. um, especially this sheet. I especially like the line art that his hard surface stuff has. Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, I've spoken with him a lot, so I'll I'll leave it to you guys. What's your mm. kind of that that all important two second reaction when you see this artist's work? What what do you think? What would you do differently? Cool. Um, I think it's a pretty good start. I can tell like it's just kind of starting to pick up like a lot of kind of des design. Um, I think same kind of crit, like trying to be a little bit like patient just do a little bit more line you, you don't need to render too much yet i do i do agree with hardy like some of your line work actually looks pretty good especially the spaceship ones um and kind of going back to um set up the world a little bit like it, it's a cool ship but i just don't know what does this do yet so sometimes when you look at a, 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 a object right it's hard to tell is it a good design or a bad design if i don't know what it's supposed to be so if this is like a fighter jet i was like oh cool it feels fast right but if you're like, no, I'm I'm actually trying to design a bomber, they're like, oh no, 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 then this is not a good design for a for that, right? So you kind of want the viewer to kind of understand, oh, what is this ship supposed to do? Um, who is the pilot, which is that person, right? That kind of alien looking character. Yeah. But who is he? You know, is he a bounty hunter? Like, because like if he's a military versus a bounty hunter, um, type that what kind of dense or what kind of like decals when we put on the ship will be different um what kind of shape the ship will be different is it like ex-military like things are very much like uh, um very careful very 90 degree everything's super clean versus like oh here's a bounty hunter just like a uh, mandalorian things are a little bit more makeshift you know diy right um all those become a very nice citrus element and just like ex almost show the personality through the, the the object you know um but yeah i think i think um i think it's a good good start um the shape looks pretty cool um, feels really fast, which is kind of nice. Yeah, definitely triangle heavy, which I think mm -hmm. is great. And I, I happen to know this is like a space pirate mm. thing he was kind of building around where yeah. his uh, his character leveled up and so did his ship kind cool. of evolved space over time. Space pirate. 
I think that'd yeah, be really so... fun. And and think about like when a space pirate, like, so what is a space pirate? They probably go rob other, you know, people. Like, how do they rob them? Um, if I don't know if you guys are familiar with a game called uh, Star Citizen, because I play that game, so I'm a space pirate in the game. <laughs> Coin call. So that game is cool because like when a ship like this, right? Usually this is a fighter jet. That means their purpose is to shoot down other jet. It's not supposed to loot them because you know you don't have the space. If you loot them, where are you gonna put your cargo, right? So now think about maybe even create a different tier. You know, this is a uh, uh, like a like a jet kind of thing. Here's a uh, bigger ship that it's just literally by looting. You know, there's just storage. Um, another ship maybe just uh, like a like a heavier um, like a mother ship kind of thing. Like just store different ships. So they even like study on like even military, right? You have like the aircraft carrier, you have like the cruise, you have like different type and sizing, and that would change the silhouette and also change the function. So now you can even create a very nice um, like a project, just like different type of ship is still owned by the same person or a different crew. You know, um, that would be really fun to see. Yeah, I kind of feel it's pirates too. Like these people, the more they rob, the more they would kit bash their own ship. So they're gonna steal parts from. Mm-hmm. Working ships that they like and just patch them right onto there. So yeah. almost, like these are clean. This is a clean ship. I yeah. want to see a spice pirate ship that has just the elements of stolen pieces from other ships. I think yeah. that's more good one to look at is uh like basically like Star Wars, like Mandalorian. Remember the bike? One of the scenes that yeah. they even have the uh, old um like the uh, the ship that from I think it was like the prequel. Yeah. yeah, they took one of the engine and then they kind of like just keep bash on top, right? Um, and if, if that's like kind of like similar to your world, it, it, it was just starting to have shape like that, you know, like very Mad Max. Fun. Oh, totally. Space Mad Max. Mm-hmm. Like reskin. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Cool. Um, guys, that is that is all the portfolios we've wrapped. And we're we're a little under two hours, so we'll uh we'll call it there. But um Thank you both very much for doing this. And maybe before we um, we call it a night, uh, anybody have any more kind of just generalist things, more uh, presentation things, strategy, portfolio, psychology, uh, anything else you want to close with before we sign off? Mm, not much. I think we covered quite a lot. It just yeah. always try to um, strategy a little bit. It's always about the strategy. I'm like, I'm a guy that very like based on like process and strategy, you know. So it's just like it's just like when you play like Dark Souls or something. Like don't jump into a to a room and try to fight a boss right away. Just study a little bit. You want to kind of study your enemy. What kind of steel do you want to apply to? What who are they gonna looking into? Uh, what kind of taste? You know, like you don't want to submit a wrong portfolio to a wrong studio. You know, like you want to submit to three four three or like oh I want to work under Sparf. Oh that guy loves line drawings, love like shape paintings, right? So you want to include that a little bit more. So the chance of you getting higher is just bump up a little bit just because the content, you know, fits, you know, feed their eyes, you know? So um, yeah, a little bit of strategy. Yeah. Think about that a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Strategy think- and just being purposeful. Totally. Uh, Randy. Yeah. I think for like, especially like newer artists and, and I saw kind of a theme that was going on a little bit in some of the portfolios is if you don't know the direction you're going to go or you, or if someone asks you right now, Hey, you know, what do you want to do? the future and you stop for a minute and go, I'm not really sure. I think it'd be worth your while to take some time and figure out what that is. Do some research into the pipeline and see what part of it you want to be because uh, it will help you avoid not spinning your tires for a long time. And you can focus your portfolio development in that direction as opposed to doing, you know, environments one day, characters next day, something, something, something. You're just going to develop everything a lot slower. So put your focus and all your eggs in a basket and really develop that. And then, you know, when you have time or when you get that job, like what I did, I focused on environments. And then when I got, you know, started working with environments, then I can focus on other aspects and stuff like I'm doing 3D now. and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I really think it's worth everyone's while, especially if you're fundamentally still a little bit weak. Start really grinding away on that thing that you can envision doing for the rest of your life your primary thing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. kind of gut check yeah. pick a thing to find yeah. you know who who are you as an artist which is hard mm-hmm. but i think that's great advice someone yeah. said i think it's time for case in the show us the shelf <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just like a lot of like Iron Man's and Star Wars, uh, hot toys and stuff like that. A lot of toys. 
Where's your big Gundams? Oh, the big Gundams is all it's upstairs. <laughs> My room oh, out, of, <laughs> out of space. I had to move some of the toys upstairs. But <laughs> just want to uh, shout out to uh, Pearson. He's in the in the chat room. Pearson is a really really badass character artist. Um, we used to went to school together. Yeah, we actually did a project together as a student. Yeah, so yeah, good to see you. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely want to check out his work if you can. Yeah, drop Pearson's is awesome, for... man. Uh, Phoenix says, is it a good idea to have your portfolio on multiple sites at the same time, or won't it be confusing for your uh, recruiters? Um, I'll let you take that one. You're you're a pro on that one. Okay, can you repeat that? Oh, so he said, is it a good idea oh. to have your portfolio on multiple um, sites at the same time? I think it's uh, I think it's better to have one site, I think. So I will just have your site or um yeah have your own site to be the most of the most updated portfolio but i usually to be honest i use different sites for different purposes you know like our station is a good one to throw everything into it it's just like a mixture of like oh this is all the stuff that i like to do but every time i apply i don't apply with my art station i try to give them like a selected image to just to match the studio and anything that had to be so a lot of time I talk to clients, right? They were like, oh, can I see more about that? So I would do research on what type of work that they want to see. Ask them that kind of question, break down what kind of games that they're working on, and then show them that type of work, send it to them. And then ask them if you want to see more, I have a little bit more and can send it over. Um, and also I have an art station that had just a bunch of my work that kind of collectively might not match your style, but just everything that I like to do. Um, Instagram, I use it more like a daily, you know, a little a little bit more chill you know kind of chit check in a place you know it's not like a professional portfolio kind of place so so yeah i just use it differently yeah uh this other question too I, i'd like to take this one but pcu says how do you decide what or which art pieces to keep or remove? Uh, what kind of pieces hurts your portfolio even if the art is good mm -hmm. so sometimes this can be a tough question a question to answer because again i don't know who you are i don't know what your goal is in the end but some like basic things are if you're ready to jump into professional interviews or like get your professional portfolio going, I think some like easy things to remove are anything that doesn't stand up to the standard of your best pieces, anything that's below that or not even in the ballpark would be a good idea. If you're questioning it when you're going through like, ah, could I keep this one? That's the one I would immediately get rid of. If I'm <laughs> questioning. Another thing is like fan art or like co copycat IPs, not like something you've abruptly changed are probably not great um, if you're not like I, I heard Kason make this mention a lot while we were going through the portfolio tonight, but like having things that aren't project based, like just single pieces all over the place or things that aren't cohesive. Mm -hmm. I think those are also red flags in your portfolio. And those are my opinions, at least on that. Yeah, like it, it, you can put individual pieces, but you got to be like badass, you know, if it's like if it's not badass enough, you just like, eh. Next, you know, you don't want to have people question your ability. Um, that's why. And if you really don't know what to take out, the best thing is just contact, you know, any professional that you know, your teachers, your friends, just have them like, hey, just rip me apart, man. Just tell me which one is sucks. Just take it out, you know. Um, that's always a, a, a good thing to do. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, uh, actually, we had a fan art question too. I think we're pretty, uh, pretty solidly recommending against fan art even in an illustration portfolio even if it re demonstrates really great painting skills fan art for some reason i think you you can't shake the impression that you are somebody very young who's just super stoked about spider-man or whatever and it kind of has the wrong impression that you're trying to put out there instead of making mm -hmm. you seem like this mature problem solving professional who will just make the art director's life instantly easier. It, it just sends the impression the other way. So I'd say unless you actually worked on whatever that IP is, I, I wouldn't have a, a very recognizable IP anywhere in your portfolio, even if it's gorgeously expertly painted, um, just do something different. You know, mm -hmm. it it riff off of it a little bit. Instead of Spider Man, have some kind of a really athletic ninja flipping through the air, or an assassin, or some. You know, there's there's ways you can pivot. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna yell at James for his question because he's already doing what he's supposed to be doing. I've seen him working. James says, "Hi guys, I know this question is a bit off topic, but I was curious to see if you guys had any tips for figure drawing and how to just approach understanding drawing the human body." 
Dude, you're doing it already. I watched the other day. You're doing gesture drawings. You're studying anatomy. You're doing all the right things. What I you need to do is be patient with yourself and let it develop because anatomy and gestures and drawing people is a pain in the ass <laughs> and just keep doing it and pumping it out. But uh, what do you guys think? You got anything I missed on that one? I am I am very deep into making a ton of new people painting content. So this is very fresh in my mind. But <laughs> absolutely, I think gesture studies based on photos for a period of time you can commit to every day is the best single thing you can do to become great at drawing people. And I don't, mm -hmm. I think no, uh, you know, no book on measuring the number of heads or anything you can study will replace that other than just, you know, picking up the stylus and drawing people all the time. Uh, sounds like you're doing that, but, uh, it's also, it's, the hardest thing I think an artist can do is draw people well, because there's zero margin for error. If, if it is even slightly weird, like those, those 3d figures, just because they seemed kind of stiff and suddenly it, it just all feels off and it kind of, kind of sinks everything. Mm -hmm. um, everybody just keys in on what people are supposed to feel like. So um, if you, if it feels like progress is slow to come, it's because it's just such a high bar to clear, but it sounds like you are on a regimented practice schedule. So it, it will come, but I know mm -hmm. that is frustrating. Yeah. Uh, I got a laugh at mud, but a little bit he said Dave Raposa made a career out of his fan art or Mr. Fan art. Yeah. Well, and that guy in California won that lottery for a billion. Sometimes things happen and people <laughs> make it. <laughs> but the, generally, generally, you don't. But yeah, I mean, to your point, there's always an exception to the rule. Um, the last question I see on here, Artie, is if doing in, if doing environmental, would, what would be a good way to display that? Should the line art stages of the work be shown? That's mm -hmm. your category, case and take it away. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Um, the good thing is like show all of it. You want to show the ability of final, like the render, right? Um, but also your ability of creating loose sketches with different composition and different uh, lighting scenario, just uh, different variations. So you don't want to stuck at like, ah, it's just a portfolio of just all finished pieces. Um, you really want to showcase like, hey, this is how I got there from zero to 20%, 30%, 100%, you know? So uh, line art is actually really, really good. Also, Always think about presenting your environment a vertical slide. It means key key art and then like uh, maybe like a shoebox design of that key art, um, asset from that key art, ground design, wall design, like props is gonna go into that area. So it's always you, you're not trying to show all design in one piece of art. You want to use all this piece of art to show the the area. You want to present that area instead of like, hey, here's a painting of that that temple. You want to show like all these little pieces. They like show the whole temple. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Uh, I think that's a, a good enough place to end it, guys. Thank you so much. This was fun. Uh, great perspectives. And Case, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, great oh, meeting thank you. you. And, uh, again, I love your work and uh, we really appreciate your time. Yeah, uh, likewise. Yeah. Thank you so much for the invitations. And yeah, um, hopefully we can do more in the future. Yeah. That'd be great. We'll take you up on it. Um, awesome. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> well, uh, thanks, Randy. Appreciate your, your time as well. Thanks for being here. Oh, yeah, man. All awesome. right. Awesome. We'll say good night, guys. Catch you later. Good night, guys. Have a good one. Okay. I think the stream is ended, but. Um,